And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. The Lord gave me a particular word for the church today. It's a rhema word. Amen. He gave me some revelation knowledge last night and this morning to share with you. Because I, I believe if we are not careful, one Easter can pass. Amen. After the other, and we can miss the significance of Easter. Mm -hmm. We can miss the significance of Easter. My goal, every time I say, Father, every time I open the Bible, my goal is not to leave what I read on, on the pages of the Bible, but I want to know how it relates to me. My goal is how does the resurrection relate to me? Now, I can be, uh, you know, I can speak about the resurrection i can give history and just walk down through history but that doesn't change my life it's revelation knowledge that changes our lives how does it benefit me how does it leave the pages of the bible and affect my life so i can be like jesus mm -hmm. are you getting what i'm saying and so today god gave me a word for you hopefully it'll help us benefit from the account of the resurrection and become more like jesus is that all right matthew's account of the resurrection matthew chapter 28 verse 1 i'll read in amen and i will just commentate on a few things and then we'll go back amen and deal with the text matthew chapter 28 verse 1 reads in the end of the sabbath amen can you say in the end of the sabbath that Saturday evening, uh huh, according to the Jews. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, amen. So it's six in the evening, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Sunday morning. Can you say dawn? The Bible says here, as it began to do what? Dawn towards the first day of the week. So between, uh, let's say, three Sunday morning and six, many of you were sleeping, praise God. Amen. The Bible says, around that time came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Now, this is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. Amen. This is Mary, of whom seven demons, amen, were uh, Jesus um, removed, casted out, so to speak. Seven demons from that lady. You know what I realized, brothers and sisters, in, uh, uh, as you live life, I realize people who benefit the most sometimes sacrifice the most are, are you getting what i'm saying sometimes we see people doing things and we say how can they do that it's because the lord has done a lot for them not that he hasn't done a lot for all of us but they've hung in there and they've seen the goodness of God. They've experienced the mercies of God. And so therefore they live a sacrificial life. Right. Let me share with you brothers and sisters. Sometimes you need to hang in there. Right. Let me say that again. Sometimes you need to do what? Hang in there until you see the salvation of the Lord. Right. And then and then maybe it will change your life. Yeah. Yeah. The devil... This is what the devil wants to do. He wants you and I to give up. Quickly. Walk away and say, this thing doesn't work. Well, how come it works for some people and not for me? Let me say that again. I said that too quick, right? I asked myself, I used to ask myself when I was growing up as a Christian. Can, can, I, be, can, I, be, can I be transparent? I was a Christian. I wasn't serious. And I used to sit back and say, how comes? It works for them. It doesn't work for me. I'm not sure about you. I, I've asked myself, I used to ask myself that question when I was growing up as a Christian. How comes? Does God practice, practice partiality? And you know what I found out? Dickness? I found out some people like Jesus, they've set their face like a flint. And they're not serving Jesus because they want Jesus' healing. They are not serving Jesus because they want Jesus' money. They are not serving Jesus because they want Jesus' peace. They are serving Jesus because they love him for real. Yes, yes, yes. They are grateful and thankful that he did not forget them. 
Oh, hallelujah. You see, let me share with you, brothers and sisters. Jesus went all in. The Bible says, if you lose your life, you see, Jesus lost this life for you. That's why the Bible says, when he did that, God gave him all power. You, you see, we haven't lose our life. We are still doing things willy-nilly for God. Well, that's not an Easter Sunday service. That's another. I'm sharing with you. Hear me. A great day, a day is coming. The Bible talks about a great departure from the church. There is coming a time. Hear me. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. And I'm just putting you on alert. That Jesus said there is a day coming. When the devil put in the pressure. When he puts the pressure on you. For those of us who are not fully committed to the cause. And just living here. Doing a little here. A little over there. A little down there. And not committing fully. The Bible says the time is coming when the devil presses in. And when he puts in the squeeze. The Bible says there will be a great departure from the faith. My advice to you is digging now. Do what? Digging now. Look, draw a line in the sand and tell Satan, not today. It doesn't matter what you do. Not today. Like Job, you cannot take my life. And I know my God will show up for me. He may not come today, but he's sure enough he'll come. You, <laughs> you see, because we have people, who, we have people whom, who can testify. You can call and say, he shall up for him. He shall up for her. And he doesn't practice speciality. He'll show up for me. Just a word of caution, that's all. So our text continues. And, be and, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Listen, listen. The ladies are on the way to the burial ground, the sepulcher. Or sepulcher. And the Bible said, God saw them coming. And when God saw them coming, God said, Look, I got to show that tomb empty. Amen. I can't let them leave empty handed. Hmm? God said they took the initiative to come early to, to ensure. And notice, notice, notice the faith these ladies would have. They looked at Jesus buried. It, takes, it took four men to roll over the stone in front of the sepulcher. Where, how, how are you going to get the manpower? Two women to roll over the stone. Can somebody say, but God? <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. But God saw the sacrifice. And hear me, hear me. Hear me, hear me here clearly. You will never go empty handed when you sacrifice for Jesus. I'm telling you on the authority of God's word. You and I will never go empty handed when we do what? Yeah, sacrifice for Jesus. So, they, so, so they, 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 they're on their way. The Bible says, uh, for, uh, the Bible says, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Here is why. For the angel of the Lord, God sent his angel. The angel, that's his personal messenger. Can you say he's, uh, he's arm up? I didn't mean to say that, but anyhow. The angel of the Lord descended from where? Amen. Heaven. And what he did? And rolled back the stone from the door. And what he did? In other words, uh, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Just sipping on an iced tea. Amen. Uh, just, just roll back the stone. No big deal. The thing that seems to be difficult for us is nothing for God. Let me tell you. I, I know I said it too fast. But the things that are difficult for us, they are what? Nothing for God. That thing that you're struggling with. That issue one I was struggling with, I don't have that on my book. I'm just, sorry, in my notes. I'm just comment, commenting on the text as I go along. Is that all right? That thing which seems to be insurmountable, it is nothing for God. Just like that, God can take care of it. Uh-huh, the story hasn't ended. So it says here, his, and his, now the Bible is giving us a description of how the angel looked. Because that particular angel spent a lot of time in the presence of God. He's reflecting the light. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible referred to God as the father of lights. So the Bible says, it says here, it says that a friend, it says something about a friend. Lord have mercy. A friend sharpens the countenance 
of a friend. That's what it says, right? Somewhere. Some, so that angel has been in the presence of God. And so he took up some, some of God's character. God shines his little really light. And so the Bible says his countenance was like, like, was like what? Lightning. And his raiment, his clothing was what? White as snow. Can you say what a sight? What a sight. And it continues, verse 4. It continues. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake. There were four men standing at the front of the tomb, guarding Jesus' body. Four soldiers. Can you say experienced soldiers? Yeah, yeah, because the Pharisees told Jesus, told the Pharisees told uh, um, Herod, look, we need you to ensure that his tomb is well, is well guarded because he said he's going to rise again. So Herod said, okay, okay. He said, you see to it. So they, so they placed experienced soldiers at, at, at the front of his tomb. Four. And the Bible said, when they saw the angel's face and the angel's clothing, they what? They did shake. They began to shake and became as dead men. They what? Became as dead men. Have you ever seen somebody like the blood was drawn out of them? The blood was drawn out of their veins. They just collapsed. All God did was, all the angels did was just arrive. He didn't fight, he didn't do anything, he just showed up. Now that's power. You know we have that available to us. The Bible says angels are ministering spirits. Send forth to minister to those of us who are heirs of salvation. Do we have anybody who are heirs? Do we have any heirs of salvation in the house? But since you got to believe that. You, you got to what? You... Uh, uh, Pastor Webb and I were talking yesterday and this is what we, we concluded. You have to believe in your heart that there is really a God from heaven answering prayers. Yeah, I'm sharing, you have to really believe that. So when you pray, the Bible says when you pray, if you are sure that you know that he heard you, you shall have what you, what, what you desired of him. 1 John 5, 14 and 15, you can check it out after. Let me continue. It says here, Verse 5, and the angel answered and said unto the women. No, listen, listen what's happening. We have, to, we have to explain what's going on. What happened there? The ladies are on their way. And before they came, the angel descended. These four men, they fell in the... They, they collapsed and they ran. They what? They ran off. We are not told so, but we know that because the women came and the women did not see them. Hello, somebody. Tell your, tell your neighbor, sometimes you have to use your head when you read the Bible. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> a preacher said to me, Emmanuel, your head is not, should not only be a rack for a hat. You should use it sometimes. <laughs> you know, these preachers I grew up with, they're something else. I remember they said, use your head sometimes, son. It should not be a rack holder. <laughs> uh, amen. Are you with me? Well, you, well, you get my point. And you know, I'll be honest with you, it took, me a, it took me a while to understand that. You know, I'm thinking, what he meant? And a year, uh, oh my God, that's what he meant a year after that. And the angel answered and said unto him, unto the women, what did the angel said? Fear not, ye, you do not fear, do not be afraid because of what you see. For I know that you seek whom? Jesus. Didn't I tell you whenever you seek Jesus, you never go empty handed? You never, notice the word, seek Jesus. They got up early. Uh-huh. And they went in search of Jesus. And the Bible said, the end, and the Bible, for you seek Jesus, which what? Which was crucified. Heaven knows what happened to Jesus. Even if heaven was silent, since you hear me very carefully, even if heaven was silent when Jesus was suffering, heaven knows what happened to Jesus. Heaven may be silent about what's going on with you, but I came to tell you, heaven knows what's going on with you. Right. Thank you God. <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, heaven knows my challenges. Heaven knows about my sufferings. Oh yes, hallelujah. Nothing goes unnoticed by God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we move further on? Can we move further? Uh -huh. Can we go to verse 6? Verse 6 reads, notice verse 6. The angel said, he is not here. For he is what? Risen. Oh Lord, I give you praise. The angel said, long before you came, he left behind the old body. He left behind the napkins. He left behind the strips that wrapped his body. Long before you came, he walked out. 
as he what? As he said. And the angel said, come and see the place where the Lord laid. Come see the empty tomb. Come see what? The empty tomb. Yes. What Jesus did is when he rose from the dead, he left a trail of evidence. Because he knew they were going to question his resurrection. They what? He knew they were going to do the what? Yeah, so he left a trail of evidence. The first thing he left was he took his time and he wrapped the napkin that was over his head. Uh huh. Then he laid the strips of clothing properly mm -hmm. to show that, hey, I wasn't stolen. I didn't live in a hurry. I left on my own terms. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, can you say thank God for Jesus? I thank God for resurrection power. Anybody here be about resurrection power today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Resurrection power. It says here, let's, let's see if we can finish this right here. Lord, help me. It says here, verse 7 reads, verse 7, and go quickly. The angel said, go, since he's not here, since he's not here, you shouldn't be here. What are you doing here? He said, go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. Can he say risen from the dead? There are some dead things in your life. Today, you're going to rise from them. Yeah, I really believe that. I believe that. I believe that. There are some things that has held you down for a while. And today, God told me, this is what the Lord said to me. Today, if you believe his word, you're going to rise from that. Amen. I believe destinies are going to be a reason. Lost opportunities. Are you getting me, saints? But you have to believe it. Uh, you have to do what? Believe it. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that he said, He is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. Verse 8, verse 8. Listen to verse 8. Verse 8 reads, And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and what? Great, great can you say great joy? great joy? Look, that's how you live whenever you seek Jesus. You live with what? Great joy. Not just joy, great joy, because you'll never leave empty handed. And they did run to bring his disciples' word. Look, when you got great joy, you cannot just walk, <laughs> you got a pep in your step. I met the Lord's angel, he's alive and well. Oh, I got a praise for my God. Well, <laughs> oh, can somebody say, Glory be to Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Can you jump over to verse, can you jump over to verse 11 for me, please? Verse 11 to 13. Let's read that of the same text. Now, when they were going, now listen here now. Let me explain. They here means the ladies. Amen. They left the tomb. They ran out. You remember, we just said that. When they were going, behold, some of the watch, some of the guys who were at the tomb who fell out in a state of collapse, in a state of paralysis. The Bible says some of the watch came into the city. Uh-huh. They ran, I told you, they, and, and begin to tell, show means tell unto the chief priests all things that were done. They said, we were there, and the light came from, and an angel, and we fell out. They're telling the chief priests what's going on. Listen, listen, listen. Verse, two, verse 12, verse 12. Verse 12, and when they were assembled, the chief priests went and they told the elders, the spiritual leaders in Israel, the Orthodox, listen to me, the Orthodox Jews, not the Messianic Jews. Let me say that again. The whom? Orthodox Jews. There are two types of Jews. The Messianic Jews who are Christians, the Orthodox Jews who are still waiting for Jesus. I feel sorry for them. Because he's risen already. Amen. So they said here, that, and, and listen, assembled with the elders and had taken counsel. So the, the elders, amen, the chief priest went to the elders and they begin to, cons they begin to what? Conspire. That's what, and, 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 and guess what they did? They begin to conspire. They gave what? Large money unto what? The soldiers. They gave what? Large money. Can somebody say hush money? Hush. Listen, let me tell you, hush money this has been used a lot. It's been going around a long time. It's not today. This is the first recorded use of hush money in the Bible. Used by Christians. Used by what? Spiritual leaders. Hello, somebody? <laughs> yeah. They gave large money and guess what they said unto them? Guess what? Can you go to 
saying his disciples came by night. Tell everybody. No, we give you. We're setting you up, giving your retirement to hide the truth. Hush. But this is what you say. Say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Now, what type of soldier would you be if you're running God sleeping? You see how money can get people to say some stupid things. Impugn their integrity. Yeah, experienced soldiers. Can you can you imagine? Somebody say fire them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got a good retirement. They can go. Bless the Lord. How many of you would agree that the Bible is a beautiful book? It's a beautiful book. I have asked God, never let me read the Bible and not see how it applies to me. Uh, because I don't want to be in darkness. How many of you understand why? I want to see how it benefited me. Now, this is what I want to share with you, saints. We here this morning, we are not here to defend the resurrection. How many of you would agree? We didn't come here to defend the resurrection. We came to celebrate the resurrection. Amen? Listen, scripture, which is final authority, can defend itself. The scripture can, is likened to a lion. You don't need to defend a lion. A lion can defend itself. Let me just share with you. Let, let, let me share this with you. Many atheists, many atheists has undertaken the futile task to prove the claims of the Bible are erroneous. However, they failed on every count. They what? Failed on every count. The Bible claimed Jesus resurrected from the grave. And because the Bible itself says that God is not a man that he should lie. Deuteronomy uh, 27, 18. God is what? God is not a man that he should lie. God cannot lie. God has never lied. So if you're thinking that the claims of the re resurrection are erroneous, you are in error, not the Bible. Mm, you'll join those guys who failed to prove the claims of the Bible are erroneous. Can you tell your neighbor, in the same way he rose... I arise today. Yeah, yeah, say it. In the same way he rose, I arise today. Yeah, yeah, I arise today. Glory be to Jesus. The Bible says in Mark chapter 13 verse 31, Jesus said, my words, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, what? Shall never pass away. Can you say the scripture? Amen. Every time Jesus talk about his words, is the scripture. Whatever that's in here, will come to pass. Amen? Anybody happy about that? So let's, let, let's, let's get a little bit into what the resurrection is about. Because what I want you to do today, I want you to see the significance and the importance of the resurrection. The resurrection is unique to Christians. It's unique to Christianity. No other religious leader died and came back alive. Can, you, can, can I say that again? No other religious leader died and came back alive. None of them can make that claim. Listen to me. Listen to me. Jesus is not a prophet. Jesus is the Lord God Almighty. Jesus is. Listen. I'm here. Jesus is not a prophet. He is what? The Lord God Almighty. Jesus said, I decide to lay down my life and I'll pick it up again. Yeah. Nobody. He, he said, no one takes it from me. Because, no, I, I got to give you the first. Some of you looking at me like, what is he talking about? Is Yes, yes. Can you go to John chapter 10? John chapter 10. Let's look at what never returns void. Let's look at the Bible which never lies. John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. You got it? You got it? Quickly, I got a few minutes. I see some of you looking at me. It's time to the, the other hot dogs that's out there on the others. <laughs> you got it? You got it? John chapter 10 verse 7. Jesus said, therefore doth my father love me. Because what? No, he said, I lay down my life that I might what? That I might take it again. He, verse 18. He said, no man taketh it from me. But I lay down of myself. Listen to, he said, I have resurrection power to lay down. And I have power to pick it up again. Now, how many of you can serve a God like that? 
You know, some people say, hear me, hear me. Some people say, all things are possible with God. But you ask them, if you say all things are possible with God, can God die and come back alive? Well, you just said all things are possible, right? <laughs> yeah, when I'm, yeah, yeah. You just said all things are possible. Now you're putting limitations on what you said. If God, if all things are possible, well, God can die and come back alive. And that's what happened here. Because all things are possible with what? With God. That's what the Bible says. How many of you heard, how many of you heard of a, a guy called, uh, Lord help me, I'm looking for, I have some information here. His name is, is Houdini, I think. Yeah, Houdini, H-O-U-D-I-N. Let me tell you who he is. Houdini was a Hungarian-born American illusionist and stunt performer. Noted for his sensational escapes. Listen, he would challenge the officers to keep him locked up and then would escape in some strange way. Well, Houdini commanded huge crowds and had amassed a huge following. He claimed that on the 50th anniversary of his death, listen, he would come back from the dead. Houdini said that. All he has is tricks, but you know, he can come back. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. So, on that date, a group of his followers, a group of his disciples gathered around his grave in San Francisco. Waiting for him to return. They waited. And they waited. And they waited. Did I say they waited? And they waited. <laughs> it's well documented. They waited, and then they start living one by one, embarrassed. Because Houdini doesn't have power to raise himself from the dead. He's a human being with no power except he's a Christian. Can I say Jesus Christ is truly Lord? He's truly Lord. <laughs> oh, can somebody give him a clap? Can somebody give him glory? Yeah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. Jesus said, nobody can take my life. Jesus told Martha in John chapter 11 verse 25. Jesus said, Lazarus is going to rise again. And Martha said, Lord, I know in the resurrection he'll rise again. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And the life. He come on somebody. Oh glory be to God. That's what he said in John chapter 11 verse 25. He said he that believeth on me. Though he was dead. Yet shall he live. Oh come on somebody. Hallelujah. Anybody here believe on Jesus. Jesus. The resurrection is a person. It's not an event. Are you getting me? Jesus has resurrection power. And he sent me today to tell some of you. You've been too dead. You need to arise. We need to what? Arise. Open up your mouth and say something. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. Tell your neighbor, I'm resurrected. I, I'm resurrected. I, I'm resurrected. I am resurrected. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. One more time, say, in the same way he rose, I arise today. One more, in the same way he rose, I arise today. One of the last things Jesus said to his disciples before he left, in Matthew 28, 18, he said, all power. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And he's talking about resurrection power. He said, I got power in two realms. <laughs> you see, before that, Adam had given the devil the authority. When Jesus died and he got back the authority, uh -huh, he rose and he told his disciples, now, he never said that before. He said, now that I died and I got up, <laughs> now all power is given unto me. In heaven, in both realms. Now I deputize you to go out and railroad hell and preach the gospel. Can I, can I tell you something? It doesn't matter how much I holler. Until you get that revelation knowledge, you'll leave here, you'll leave here just like Pee-wee. 
Can I say it again? Can I say it again? It doesn't matter how much I, I know. I mean, I'm not teaching, so I've been a Christian for 45 years. I'm not teaching you something I do not know. Preachers used to holler, they used to sweat. You see, like I'm sweating? And I would be sitting there. And I'm saying, why are you yelling like that? What is wrong with him? Does it take all that? <laughs> because, Eric, I had no life flowing in me. I did not have a prayer life. I did not devour the word. Oh, but the day came. Ah, bless God. Can you say thank you, Jesus, for the word of God? Can you say thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost? Ah, that's the resurrection power he's talking about. You cannot sit still and be full of the Holy Ghost. You've got to say something. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All power is given unto me, said in heaven and in earth. And he said, you go and minister the gospel now because I'm deputizing you. You know, since the resurrection was the greatest display of Christ's power. You know that? The greatest display. Rising from the dead revealed his absolute power over both realms. Over the physical realm and the spiritual realm. That is why the devil did everything he could to keep Jesus in the grave. I guarantee you, if God opened your eyes, you would see every demon in hell pressing against that stone. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. I, I, you get what I'm saying? Now, this is what the Lord gave me. You know, I was studying last night, and the Lord said to me, I need you to share this with my, with my kids. Maybe they'll understand why you just hollers. <laughs> Can I show you how dead folks benefited from the resurrection? Can I show you? Is it okay if I show you from the Bible? How dead Christians, I'm not talking about Christians who are like, like us who are alive. I'm talking about folk who were dead, buried six feet deep. Can I show you how they benefited? And if I show you how they benefited, will you take that and run with it? Uh-huh. Some of you are saying, I'm not sure. What are you talking about? <laughs> take it from me, saints. I am not, I am not lying. I'm telling you. Can I tell you how dead people, people who are buried six feet deep, benefit? Can I share it with you? And if I share it with you, Eric, will you run with it? Those of you who are looking, if I show you how dead folks, dead Christians benefited from the gospel, from the resurrection, will you run with it? There we go. Can you go to Matthew chapter 27? Let's read from verse 52 to 54. You got it? Matthew chapter 27. You know, I knew that was always in the Bible, but last night it hit me like a... And this morning I said, oh my God, I'd never seen it like that before. You got it? It says, and the graves, back up, to verse, back, back up to verse 51. I think we got some context to put it in. I think so. You got verse 51? And behold, talking about when Jesus, when Jesus died. So what the Bible is doing here, he's putting together when Jesus died on Friday and when he resurrected on Sunday morning. Are you with me? In two verses. So, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. When Jesus died, the Bible says the veil that separated the Holy of Holies from the sanctuary. There was a big old veil. Amen. That separated the sanctuary from the Holy of Holies. And only the high priests and certain priests were privileged to access that part. Amen. Of the tabernacle. Common people like you and I couldn't do that. Only the priest. Uh-huh. Can you see only the priest? The high priest. Common folk like you and I would be struck down dead by God. But when Jesus died, the Bible says the veil of the temple. Now, this is not just the little veil you see here. Uh, his, uh, 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 Josephus, Josephus and Eusebius, they are both secular historians they are not christians they said that veil was so thick if you put 20 horses on one side and 20 horses on the other side and they pull they could not tear that veil that's how powerful that veil was but when jesus died <laughs> can somebody say glory be to god glory. god said now all my kids can come to me directly let me tear down that veil 
and the Bible says the veil of the temple rented from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks rent rocks begin to shake can somebody say resurrection power ah uh, let's continue and the Bible says when that up and the graves were opened and many dead bodies hold on hold on didn't I tell you dead folks benefited from the right here and many dead bodies of, of whom of the saints now don't say folks Christians who died amen uh-huh what which slept did what a road they get from the power of God listen you do. come on somebody uh, glory be to Jesus are you getting what I'm saying yeah yeah and came out of the graves after his what can somebody say resurrection power? <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Folk began to say, I thought you were dead. We buried you. How, how did the rigor mortis reverse? Come on, somebody. How did that? I know you died. You've been dead for a couple of months, a couple of years. What happened since? Are you getting what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost, Pastor Weber. Listen, listen to me. The power of God, the resurrection power, reversed rigor mortis and give life to dead kidneys, give life to dead hearts, give life to decayed lungs. Come on, Tabasata. Since are you getting what I'm saying? Mr. 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 Grover, are you getting that? So I begin asking myself, what am I doing with sickness in my body? If the resurrection, if dead folks benefited from the resurrection, what am I doing with that issue in my body? Well, some of you, some, you know, some of you, you know, <laughs> ah, glory be to God. Ah, you get, that's what God showed. Pastor, I've never seen that. God told me, tell my kids, if dead folks, dead Christians, Rigor mortis settled in. And the resurrection power reversed. You, you, sure, sure, you get the revelation. Yeah, you get it. You get it. You get it. I'm saying dead opportunities, they've got to come back alive. Dead destinies, they've got to come back alive. Pastor, last night, last night, last night, I began saying, nothing is taking me out until I fulfill my destiny. My destiny, nothing is taking me out. I've got resurrection power working in me. Yes, sir. No, no, no. Some of you, you you'll get it next year. You'll get it next year. <laughs> but for those of us who need God's help and we've been kept down for too long in grave clothing, kept down too long. Uh, I was minding my business last night and the Lord said to me, tell them if dead folk benefited from the resurrection why can't we benefit from the resurrection minister jim i heard that loud and clear i've never heard that i've been preaching the resurrection for 13 years but i believe today is a new day yeah i believe today is a day of reckoning i believe today many of you are going to rise up in newness of life in Christ Jesus. I oh can somebody say you Bellabron they didn't know you were praying my sermon this morning. Tell somebody new beginnings. New beginnings. New beginnings as of today. New beginnings. Things are going to be new. My body is going to behave itself. No sickness or disease, no spinal injury. You better speak to this and tell it. I've got a resurrection power making you right again. The resurrection power gave life to decayed kidneys, 
gave life to decayed eyes. These were people whom the, the, the eye in their socket dried up. In the grave, it just popped back up. Gave a life to decayed blood. Blood. No blood running through that body in the grave. All of a sudden, it got blood. My God. Saints, I, I, is, is the Bible right or the Bible right? The Bible said people who were dead, Christians. Listen, listen, I have a list here. Amen. It gave, it gave life to decayed hearts. If you have a bad heart, tell your body, dead folk, dead hearts. Hearts that were, hearts that were, that were rotten and dried up. The resurrection power brought it life. Brought life to that heart. You better talk to your heart. Talk to your kidneys. Talk to your lungs. Talk to your eyes. Now, I, for some of you, I know I'm talking Greek. Because some of you have listened to so many smart preachers. I am a preacher. I just decided to save the Bible, that's all. I just, it doesn't matter who says what. I just believe. Because I read somewhere, all things are possible. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. To those who believe. And I've just decided to believe Jesus. I've just decided to do that. Well. Oh, <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. Since you get what I'm saying. Hallelujah. So. Are you ready to say some things? Are you ready to say some things? Because the Bible says in Psalms 107 verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Do I have any redeemed in the house today? Yes, let the redeemed of the Lord, let them tell the devil the extent of their redemption. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Whosoever the Son have set free. Free indeed. Can, do I have any free indeed people here? Free indeed, free indeed, free indeed. Oh. When I feel the power of God in my body, I feel the Holy Ghost power. I feel resurrection power. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when Jesus died, he, when Jesus left the tomb, he left a couple things behind. Amen. He left, he left some grave clothing. You remembered? Yes. He left, he, listen, he left a tomb. It was closed, but he left an open tomb. You know what else he left behind? His natural physical body. When he rose up, he rose up with the glorified. The glorified body that transcends time, passes through walls. Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. You know, time will not permit me to, but I came here to announce that the power of the res resurrection must work in our lives today, saints must work in our lives the power that raised christ from the dead the power of the resurrection bring life and vitality to my body can you say that can you say the power of the resurrection is bringing life and vitality to my body say the power of the resurrection is keeping me alive through the moments this is listen listen keeping me alive through the moments so i can fulfill my assignment no 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 you got to, you and I and you, we have a reason why we are here. In case nobody told you, you have a reason to be here. God sent you here for a reason. God sent you on earth on a mission. I know sometimes problems and issues and so on and so forth, challenges of life, these things are buried. But that's why God sent me here today. Resurrect. To resurrect opportunities. To resurrect your assignment. To send you help. Yes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Dead dreams come. Can you say dead dreams come alive? Dead opportunities come alive. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Kathy, can you say dead dreams come alive? Yeah, come alive. Yes, 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 yes. You got to say it. You got to say it. Because some of us, we've given up on some of our dreams. And because of the challenges we've gone through. No, no, God sent me to tell you, speak to those dreams. Just like Jesus arose from the grave, you speak to your dreams and bring back life to them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Say, dead dreams come alive. In the name of, dead opportunities come alive. 
come on somebody you can do better than that you can do better than that there are opportunities necessary to push me into my destiny arise now come and say it. there are opportunities necessary to push me into my destiny come alive now there are opportunities that are locked up in the grave and held back by spiritual wickedness come alive in the name of Jesus tell your neighbor the delay is over tell him the delay is over every door of opportunity opens now come on somebody open up your mouth and say it death and life lies in the power of your tongue say because he arose I decree and declare I arise financially yeah yeah call it say I arise financially financial opportunities arise oh hallelujah hallelujah every door of favor that was closed in my ministry and locked up in the grave I command it to be open now hallelujah say I lose my father I lose my mother my family you know sometimes the devil has our families bound amen folk we want to go to heaven with us they're fighting against us the devil is a liar now you have to lose them now yeah yeah tell the devil to lose them now in the name of Jesus yeah say I give life to my destiny today say I arise over every challenge in my life I arise over health challenges I arise over financial challenges say favor is mine favor is mine the delay is over the delay is over the delay is over yeah in Jesus name hallelujah can somebody say it's over I, I have a rise yeah I'm rising I'm rising I'm moving from glory to glory because of the resurrection power oh hallelujah glory be to Jesus can I can, can, can you have time for a few more you know the tomb the tomb which should be a symbol of transformation and renewal, victory and, and redemption. It should be. But for many of us, it represents hopelessness. And it is a hopelessness and despair and sorrow. But today, things are changing. Tell your neighbor, things are changing. Just as Jesus left the tomb behind, he, he, he sent me to tell you today listen, arise from your hopelessness. Say, I'm arising from my hopelessness. I'm arising from my despair. I'm arising from darkness. I'm arising from grief. I'm arising from unforgiveness. Sons of God, arise. 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 Arise because of the resurrection power. Enough is enough. Yeah, it's over today. It's over today. Things mean hell back to frustrate you. The devil is a liar. I lose it now. I lose good health now. I walk in divine health. <laughs> I heard God loud and clear. He said, Tell my people if dead folks can benefit from the resurrection, they too can. Have them say it. I arise from my hopelessness. I arise from despair. I arise from a slothfulness. The devil is a liar. I'm awake and no more sleepy. I'm awake. I'm awake. The devil is a liar. 
Come on, somebody, can you slip those hands in the air and give him glory? Say, Lord, I receive your word today. I receive your word today. I have a rise. I have a reason. Just like Jesus arise. Say, I arise from that grave. I arise in Jesus' name. Oh, put your hands together. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Please take time to meditate on the word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today. Knowing that the Christian who meditates on the word will be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in its season and prospering in all that he does. But what if you aren't a Christian today? What if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, I love you. I need you. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee, located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m. and the morning service begins at 11. And the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com, or call the church, 850-408-8496.